Sure, yeah. yeah I'll I, keep them on. I just okay, want you to hear the music. Okay, great. Yeah, you, yeah. You could take Happy them off after. Them. Uh, well, th- all right. Welcome, welcome to a, a, a disastrous episode of the Downside. Uh, my co-host Russell Daniels has COVID for the third time. No way. Yes, third time. He went to New Orleans, uh, and it, it. I saw the pictures. It looked like he was he was trying to get it a third time. <laughs> it was Mardi Gras. He was he was in crowds. That's how I got it the first time. I, uh, the guy I was dating d- went to Mardi Gras, came back, gave me COVID. Sure. Yep. There there were times in the in the beginning of COVID where you know someone be like, "I just got back from Miami," and you're like, "Get the fuck away from me." Yeah. Totally. yeah. And it's tough. It's one of those things now. People, you know, I'm I'm no I, I I'm traveling. I'm I'm taking risks. Yeah. So I can't judge anyone. No. No. And also, like I feel like as New Yorkers, we did everything, and everyone got it twice. Yeah, and we followed every rule that they said. Well, you were in L.A. for JFL, yeah, and it must have been funny because I did an L.A. soon before that. Uh, uh, no JFL, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. but it was to go from L.A. to New York. You're like, it was jarring sometimes going around the country, and you went yeah. to a place everyone was in masks yeah. for the taping, and then you come do your Comedy Central half hour here, and thank God no one's in masks no one's for in that, mask. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Russell, we love you. We, 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 well, I love you. Is he you. really sick? Uh, no, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He just is a little under the weather. Stop checking. Everybody stop checking. Stop taking the fucking tests. Cut it out. This is how I feel. This I'm is tired YouTube's of it. Gonna pull this, this episode, down. yeah, it's fucking A. What the fuck? Spotify's gonna take this I'm down. I'm so sick of it. I don't I'm, have the Joe Rogan poll. Spotify's not fucking around with me. I'm truly, I've become a Republican. This has been such a battle with me and Ethan, who's Ethan Simmons Patterson, amazing it's, comedian yeah. and nurse. Yeah. And nurse. That's good. Fight with the nurse, Jordan. You're like, I applauded for you enough. It's time okay, for me to at disagree the with you. when it was every single comic was out sick just because one person was like, hey, I had Omicron. And they were like, well, I guess I should check. And it was everybody's test coming up positive. Nobody's sick. Then one day I actually am sick. Negative test. Truly no voice. Feel like shit. And they're like, well, you're coming to work, babe. You don't have COVID. Sure. Why? Yeah. I talked to a booker in North Carolina and someone canceled on their Valentine's Day show. And she was like, yeah, they had the sniffles and they were playing it safe. And I just think eventually the economics people are going to be like, well, you can push through those sniffles. I mean, I feel like it's like that now. The second time I got it, I was on the road, which was weird. Ooh, where were you? I was in Utica, I believe, upstate. Yikes. And I did, I know, I did morning radio, and they were talking about how much, like how the how the numbers were upticking there. And for two hours, I just made fun about how it wasn't true and it was a hoax. I was obviously joking. There. And no lie, as soon as I got back to my hotel room, um, the, the driver took me back. I was like, I, I feel a little weird. I took a nap. I woke up. I was sick, like completely sick. Brutal. Brutal, yeah. Brutal. Was this Omicron or the f- other one? Omicron. Omicron. Did, yeah. Were you, uh, was it bad? For 24 hours. Sure. Like 24 hours. But I, I went, I woke up, I went, I took a test. Um, it was negative, so I did the show that mm. night. But I was like masked and I was like away from everybody, but I took the, a negative. But I, it was horrible for that night. But then I woke up and I started feeling better. And See? then I came back, took a test negative again. Then I was like, I have to take it. Like, I'm not well yet. I took a third test positive. It's funny how it I I think I might have said the story once on this podcast, but first time I was hosting at Comics Mohegan Sun on like yeah. a Wednesday night. Yeah. I, hosting I, at Mohegan, you and Utica, we're better than this. What are you guys doing this, this out here? This was, this I, was, this I'm was not a week ago. This. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is me. And I woke up and I was so fucking sick pre COVID. But I was like, I must have been flu or something. And yeah. I was like, no, Jamarco. Yeah. Michael Jordan, when he played that game yeah. with the flu. Yeah. yeah. And now if Michael, if someone played the game with the flu, something like that, you'd yeah. be like, this is wildly irresponsible right, of you. Right, right, right. But you get that you? stage health, though. Like, because I went on stage, stage and it was rules. fine. You did a full hour. Yeah. Fine. Then, you, like, I literally got off and I put my mask on and my coat. I have, like, the, I'm, like, the chills. I'm, like, sitting in the green room. Like, stage health is so fucking cool. Yeah, it's it is. It's great. It blows my mind. It I is. have it's been insane. dead and been, like, I'm going to get up there and not be able to utter two words. And, and then you just Sometimes you're it. better because yeah. your brain is off and you're just lobotomized. Yeah. And you're just, like, here we go. We're loose. We're loopy. We're weird. We're on day yeah. quill. All right, well, let yeah. me introduce everyone. So, uh, uh, my, my fill-in co-host, she hasn't been a guest on yet, but we'll have you on a yeah, guest on. that? Too. Well, it, you know, there's a, I, once I get through everyone at the cellar, we get to you. Okay, okay. And, uh, it seems uh, like we're skipping to third base here. We haven't even kissed. I'm your co-host now? Sure, so it's a pretty standard date <laughs> yeah, night for you, right, I would yes, assume. Is, so uh, I'm here with, uh, this is Jordan Jensen filling in for uh, uh, Russell Daniels. And uh, I don't know Russell. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. You'll meet him someday. But I figured, you know, we've always had good, good uh, late night chats at the cellar. 
Just late night. Bitch well, we fest. also have late night. But yeah, right. It's good for this yeah, yeah, podcast yeah. because I think immediately, we're both, like, uh, complain in the same way. Well, we're, and we're this is a complaining we're podcast. We're cripplingly depressed human beings, sure, and sure. we're also hustling all the time. So then when we see each other, it's like, how's it going? It's awful all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very yeah, we don't have that. To, we don't have that follow up. Like awful. Like why? Yeah. No. 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 If, if I said good, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. And we're here today. With a very special guest. He just had a Comedy Central half hour. What was the name of it again? Growing Shame. Growing Shame, which yeah. I, I have watched. Yeah. Uh, 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 you just did JFL. Yeah. Uh, it's on YouTube if you want to see it. Masked audience. A fantastic set. <laughs> yeah. Tonight show, yes. we're here with, with Ian, uh, Ian Lara. Hey, man. And uh, you want to say something uh, uh, sad so I can play this intro music? Something depressing about your life? Yeah, my mom just died four months ago. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Well, if it's any consolation, you just won the most depressing uh, intro. Oh, into intro the ever? <laughs> um, I am sorry. I'm it's sorry. Okay. It's okay. Uh, four months ago. Yeah. Was it uh, sudden? Uh, kind of sudden, yes. Yeah, well, it was three months. She got sick with cancer. Fuck. Yeah. And in three months, she just ended up passing. And were you, is your husband, is your dad alive? Yeah. They're married. Okay. Yeah. They're married. 33 years. How's he doing? Um, He's all right. Yeah. He's all right. As good as you can be. Yeah. You know? As good as you can be. Do you have siblings? Who, who, yeah. Who's who been who's been there for you the most? I ha- I'm the youngest on? of five, so we're all, we're all kind of like going really through it. That's really nice, man. Yeah, we're all going through it together. That helps a little bit for what yeah, it's yeah. worth. We're all going through it together. But yeah, it was definitely tough. It was like, it was the worst. Three months. She was diagnosed and then three, it just was rapid. Yeah, first week of July and she passed away October 27th. So was she feeling it, and then she went and got checked out? She she was fine. Like, she was... I remember her party, like, at family parties, events as late as mid-June, and, like, Father's Day, June, um, and she just had a pain in her side, and mm. she went to the doctor, and it was, like, it just got worse and worse and worse. It was the worst. Like, it was just the worst experience, because my mom never was even sick. She always... Like, I never saw her sick in my life. In yeah. Does it run in, the, run in the family at all, or is this, like... No, not really. No, fucking man. Yeah. What, what? What? What kind of cancer? Colon cancer. So colon cancer. They blasted her with radiation, and, and it was just a rapid. She only did two. She only did no. She did three sessions of chemotherapy, but when she got diagnosed, it was already stage four. So, holy yeah, shit! So she tough. probably endured a lot of pain. It was tough. It was it just it was muscle rough. through. Yeah, it. it was rough. Yeah, it's been a rough year, which is weird because like I had all this shit happening in the career, and then like trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. deal with that at home. So it was. You really see, rough. there's some video. I think it's it was like a moth story slam. It's some comedian who like he got the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And like the day he got it, his daughter was diagnosed with cancer Ooh. and died. And he tells, I mean, it's it's a brutally moving story. But he talks about like it was the peak of every dream happening while his like daughter was dying. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's rough. It's it's rough. But it, but it it helped me understand a little bit how like some of the uh, some artists like in whatever field it is they can pull some of their best work out of like the dark times yeah. like the darkest times because it becomes where like that's your only source of like happiness so sure. I can see like you like digging in like I gotta come up with something like or else I'm gonna kill myself not sure. me personally but like yeah yeah, yeah. Arcs, yeah. I, I, I need to I really don't know much about cancer but I feel like I only hear about like stage one and stage four I like never fucking hear about yeah. stage two yeah. Or stage three. Yeah. I, I didn't uh, know anything. Like, literally, this time last year, I was in the same spot you are. I knew nothing about cancer. Did you, do you, like, like, my dad, he had a, he had an open heart surgery last, last yeah. year. Um, and it was a quintuple. Yeah. And, like, I've never been good at science. And these doctors start explaining it to you. And I feel myself just, like, glaze over. And I'm like, I don't even understand. Yeah. Yeah. And and party's like, how much am I going to understand? Am I going to understand enough to bother the doctor with, right. like, well, did you try this? Right. And he'll right. be like, please, please shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I mean, I, I got really educated on it. Like, I, I studied, like, I studied up on it so much that when I would have conversations with the, like, I remember meeting with a doctor. And he was like what do you do? Like, he thought that I was, like, in the medical field just because I knew so much about it. About oh, fuck that. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I... Yeah, it's gotta I, be I got, like, some semblance of control. You yeah. Know? Like, you're just like, if I if I can wrap my head around it... Right, it right. I feel like it's taking me for such a ride. Right, right, totally. right. My family was, like, the opposite. Like, my family didn't want to learn much about it because it was... The news wasn't good. Like, yeah. Like, it was never really good news, so they kind of just stayed away from it and was like, oh, we'll just, like, be hopeful. But I, like, was like, let me learn everything I can so I know that we exhaust, like, every single option. Sure. Yeah. 
And and so you had the funeral. Was it here in in New York? Yeah, we're from New York. You, yeah, you grew up in New York. Yeah. And uh, are your siblings in the arts at all? No. Did did they process it differently from you? Like as a, as an artist, did you feel like you're able to like be more expressive? Are you more expressive than them? Oh uh, no, they were all pretty expressive. Yeah, yeah. They were all pretty like they, they like we we. We are all pretty like open, like sure, like emotionally, like a- available. Did you speak of. at the funeral? No. Yeah. No. Did w- did you want to, or did you feel just like? No, was- I did not want to because I got to tell my mom everything I wanted to tell her sure. before she passed, and I felt like speaking at a funeral was like, who am I speaking to or for? Mm. It is That's a weird. I, I had just started stand up when my dad died. Yeah. And I was like doing stand up at. How old were you then? Twenty three. Twenty three. You were doing stand up? I basically was, yeah. Did it kill? Yeah. I mean, it I killed? was being funny about yeah. my dad. That's yeah. great. That's great. You know, and I, but it was totally bizarre. Funerals I mean, can be hot shows. I saw yeah. Big J Okerson at our manager, the late David Kimowitz, passing, and it like, it, it changed the way I looked at comedy. Like, the way he murdered at the funeral, like, yeah. like leveled the room of like, oh, Jewish men and women, like, Falling over laughing, how funny yeah. he was, and that was how long ago was that? I remember two thousand nineteen. Fucking a man, that story was was horrifying. Yeah, that was another terror. I I never like I never experienced death in my life like for close birth at all. My manager died in two thousand nineteen. My grandma in twenty twenty. My mom in twenty twenty one. Grandmother on which side? My dad. Your dad. Dad's having a tough. Yeah. Tough. Fucking yeah, time. it's been a rough go. It's been a rough go. Um. Yeah. The the speaking. Especially if you're a performer, what did Big J do that was so like? Was he telling stories about him or just? Big J is just so funny. Like he, like he telling stories uh, that was funny. Like he told a couple stories, but just his acknowledging of what was going on in the moment was very funny. Like he did, he crowd oh my worked God. It a little he bit, crowd worked a little bit, and it was so funny. Like That's when he great. was like, like I remember like his opening line was like he went last because they like the family knew that that wouldn't be able to be followed by like a thing. So sure. Up until him, it was like a very sad, like everyone went up and like broke down. Like th- his brother spoke, his best friend spoke. I think his dad spoke and everyone like broke down, had these emotional thing. And then big J came over, came up and he was like, man, he's like, why did they put me to go last? Like, could I speak like after his barber or something like and that would like that opened it up and then he was just from then on he was just it was like 15 minutes of killing and it was clean I was like you should send it was that clean yeah I was like you should send that to the Tonight Show that's Yo, your Tonight that's Show so set. fucking funny yeah. wow. he only comes up with clean yeah. for the funeral we literally like the community I love we we literally walked out and we were like we like it changed us like what we thought comedy was we were like comedy is like a different thing like sure because you just think it's like some stupid art that you just do like whatever you go well, at the I think comedy funeral, club there's like. If comedy is about the release of tension, what has more tension than a funeral? Right. And it's like you're either going to cry or laugh, and there's just so much to... Right. Now, did he, at the end, did he wrap it up with like a, a sweet thing, or did he end on a punchline? He ended on a sweet thing. On a sweet, a sweet thing. It was like yeah, an yeah, applause, yeah. standing O type of thing. Like that was he even like he, he, was crowd, he, was like, he was like he was like um he was like Dave was so loved by so many people like including the, the his, all his clients and if, if you don't know who his client is look at the like five black guys standing in the back <laughs> I like this just thing and there was just five of us standing back there <laughs> and they all looked and just so like God good. it was you know, so, so good. fucked up in my head I'm like so oh man when I can't wait for one of my friends to die yeah I'm I'm I mean I mean that's, that's so fucked up that's a tough follow take that back edit that out. Please, editing out takes a lot. <laughs> I'd rather lose all of them. I'd rather <laughs> lose all my friends than <laughs> edit. No, I feel like it would be a lot of pressure because you'd be like, you know, you'd, you'd want to do well for... I don't think you can plan it. I you think can't. That, I think that's... You can't. Like at my dad's, I was like, I'm just, I'll am just i just say like, thanks for coming. Yeah. And then it ended up being... I was kind of making fun of him. Yeah. And how long you been doing stand-up at that point? I was brand new. My dad had never seen me do stand-up. He had... Yeah. So I had just started in Buffalo, and I you had started like, in Buffalo. Yeah, is that where you grew up? Well, my friend became paralyzed. My best friend became paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah, of course. And I, yep. <laughs> so I moved to Buffalo to be yeah, near her. That's very nice of you. Yeah. For a second, I thought it was the other way around. Your best friend was paralyzed. You're like, I moved. I left Buffalo. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Like, so I got okay. the fuck it's out like, of there. There's no way we could be friends anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I moved there to kind of just be like. I'll talk to you with your head on the pillow. You know what That's I mean? That's very nice of you. Yeah, thanks. Accident, car accident? A cyst that was growing since she was a, b- a baby. Oh. And it just slowly crimped her cord. Damn. And then I started stand-up there. And then it was her- she was paralyzed. My dad died. And it was just like stand-up was the only thing that was like keeping me. Yeah, same. Everything was crazy, same. you know. And even right after the funeral, I was like, 
they were like, you can stay in Ithaca with the family because you're in process. And I was like, fuck, no, I have to, if I don't do stand up, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. But same. I couldn't talk about my dad dying on stage till like a year later. Are yeah. you talking about it? No. You're not, no, right? No, no. It, it, that's not really, uh, like, for, I also don't, that's not really my type of sense of humor. Like, I don't think, like, I, I don't find, I, at least not yet, I don't find humor in it. Like, sure. Yeah, sure. it took a so, really long time. Because I remember being like, I always talk about what's going on with me, who I'm dating, wh- what's no yeah. matter how severe it is. But with that shit, I was just You have like, one punchline, though, that's like, uh, was it uh, fuck me like so I can forget my dad's dying? I like have he's so alive much in about the, my dad. But oh, is yeah, he alive in that, in that bit? Isn't it in so that, I forget? No, that he died, I think, isn't it? It's it's uh, hit my cervix so hard that I forget my father's dying. It's me being yeah. like, yeah. once you're in your 30s, that's what you're thinking. Sure, sure, oh, yeah, yeah. But I just I, I have I have a lot of bits about my grandparents and like some of them they're all dead and they are all dead mm-hmm. and I lie on stage. I lie no. on, like to a certain degree. Like sometimes I have three stop, grandparents. Stop saying that. <laughs> no, no one. Yo, that. I had Alex Adelman here. He went on Conan. and he said he had an identical twin and he just has a friend who kind of oh looks god. like oh him. Oh my god! <laughs> what? Isn't that crazy? That, that, that should crazy. be illegal. Isn't that, crazy? That, that shouldn't be allowed. That made me feel when he told me that I said, "Oh fuck!" I've I've thought you know I exaggerated. No, my dad. that you embe- like and we embellish, but that you can't just make up a whole. That's um, insane. That's what, what are the rules? What are the the rules? Jeez. Are will it catch up with you? My father has been married twice, but he had long term girlfriends. So I say he's been divorced four times because to me that's what it felt like. Yeah. Wait, wait, say it again. What's the truth? The truth is he's only been literally divorced twice. But he's had bad breakups. Like, and people who are like my stepmom figures. So that's I say fine. my mom's been divorced twice, dad's been divorced four that's times. That's not an identical twin who doesn't exist. And then I have this bit that my dad's a triplet and he's two identical twins. Does he? And no, I'm joking. That's, oh. that's not true at all. <laughs> oh. that, I mean, that's huge though. Yeah. yeah I, I had say a bit my last moms night. were married, but it, it wasn't legal at the time, so they weren't really married. Yeah, yeah that's sure. fine. I accidentally yeah. revealed that my grandparents at a show last night, I revealed that all my grandparents were dead and and then I said, fuck, I was working on, I wanted to work on this bit where one of them's still alive yeah. for the whole thing to function. I try not to do those type of, because I forget. I forget, like, how yeah. you forgot. I forget that I lied. So I try to, like, kind of. I dissociate if I lie. Yeah. Like, like, lately I've been saying, I'm going through a breakup, which happened in November. Yeah. And I dissociate. As soon as I start lying and I'm like, the breakup is it. I don't, and I'm not really going through a breakup right yeah. now. I'm completely over it. I start divorcing myself from the jokes and I'm not. But if I, like. Like, well, it's hard. You have a lot of dating material. I have yeah. a lot of material when I was single, and so I always know on stage once I bring in the once I say I have a girlfriend, I've now I either have to preface bits like so I was seeing this woman three years ago. Yeah, but like I think like with the breakup stuff, like I can. I feel like we're all always going through a breakup. Like, yeah. I, so I can convince myself that like sure. totally. I'm going through a breakup, even totally. though it's like, yeah, I'm not like currently, but like I will be, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So I'll just take myself there. But yeah, I remember like now I'm single now. But when I had a girlfriend, I never, ha- I never like, I was, I had a girlfriend, and I still didn't say. I never said it in my. Dude, act. you can't say it. Yeah. I mean, I know you say. You it. can't say it. But my, my, my girlfriend brought a bunch it. of her friends to see me uh, when I was at Caroline's, and she was like. I think her friends are like, he didn't talk about you at all. And and she she said, so, she, so I said, you know what? I'm going to start focusing on these bits that I haven't been. Yeah. But I tell her, I'm like, listen, the bits that are going to be really funny about you and us are not flattering. You're not going to be like, aw. Yeah. It's not about yeah. how yeah. my mom used to complain. I only talked about my dad. And then I said some jokes yeah. about my mom. And she was like, okay, that's fine. You can go back to your dad. Yeah. Aside from Peluso, Palufo and Joe List, like yeah. if somebody says they have a girlfriend, I'm a Caitlin Palufo. Just so we know, it's some, yeah, some yeah. of the listeners on here don't right. know just the Sorry, stellar Caitlin roster. Palufo. Right. I, I, I mean, I feel like you have to know like what it is that you do on stage and like who you are. Like at this point in my life, like I don't people don't want to hear about me being happy or like <laughs> yeah. me and my relationship. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, like I look like a single dude. They just want to hear about single crazy. Even if you're in a relationship, you just want to hear me talk about crazy relationship shit. Sure. sure. Eventually, like I feel like if I get married, then I won't. But like, as you're dating, like, and also like, it's, doesn't it suck to like go on the tonight show and do a joke about a girlfriend that's no longer your girlfriend? Like me and my girlfriend went out and it's like, she cheated on you with like your well, brother. I, I thought all the time when my dad had this heart surgery, I talk about my dad a lot mm-hmm. and I do not want to pre- preface it with, so my dad died, Yeah, but let me try to take you out of this funk. And I, I, I would, I would just say, you know, I would say it without that. I yeah. can lie on stage. You're old, I, you're old now. If, if you say your dad's dead, people are like, yeah, yeah. Just so you know. Oh yeah. Nothing. Not even a, Oh, yeah. Not really. 
I mean, oh I've been God. doing dead dad jokes for what five years now. Dad don't get the same as mom. Mom will always get like a oh mom my is God. Rude. You know what's yeah. so funny? Because sometimes for like jokes on Instagram or whatever, I'll hashtag mom and dad. Yeah. And mom will have like twenty five billion people have used that hashtag. Yeah. And for dad, it's like one billion. Yeah. And it's just a very visceral like oh yeah, yeah we're we talk about this more. We yeah, care more. Dad, dad don't get your your mom. I mean, you could be ninety five and you're like I just lost my mom. They're like oh my God, are you okay? Oh, I think it's interesting. We've had a lot of, of uh, guests on here whose dad has has passed away, and yeah. I haven't heard too many people where the the mom passes away. Yeah, first there is a lot of comedians though. One time it was an awkward thing. Not awkward. It was a weird thing. One time we were sitting at the at the comedy cellar, and it was four comedians at the table. It was. Uh, I won't say that, but it was four of us, and I just sat there, and I was. Just, they were just like, "Oh, like how was your holiday?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, I'm kind of. It was a rough holiday. It's the first holiday without my mom. She had just passed or whatever." And then, like all four of them was like, "Oh, I lost my mom. I lost my mom. I lost my mom." And, and you then had we no were just idea. like, "Yeah, we were all just kind of going." And then another comedian walked in. He's like, "What are you guys talking about?" We was like, "Dead moms." He's like, "I lost my mom." Next time someone says, "How how do you get into the cellar?" Say, "You're not gonna like." <laughs> yeah, it. you're not gonna like this. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Yeah, but we were all kind of talking about like the grieving process and like. Like what, like the, the stages and shit. But yeah, it was weird to like see so many people. People you did, wouldn't even think. Like, yeah, I lost my mom. Yeah. Well, let's talk about because uh, uh, you grew up in New York. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I always wish I had grown up in New York. Where did, where did, were you born? In New I York? was born in Brooklyn, and then I moved to Queens when I was like 11, 12. And what's what was the difference between those two places? Which we literally moved like two miles away. It, I was at the border of Brooklyn and Queens, and then we moved to the border on the Queens side. So got it, it was got just it. like it wasn't like a huge move. But in I mean, I was in East New York, Brooklyn, which it was real hood, and then in Queens it was more. Uh, even though it was like a mile away, it was like a little more suburban. And now, I mean, I'm sort of being facetious. Describe what does hood mean? East New York, like you like ever seen the yeah, n- not Brownsville. I mean, that's another hood. Is Brownsville is <laughs> super deep. It's more down, more down Atlantic. Um, East New York is right by, like, right by JFK. Is at the end of Brooklyn, where J- where Brooklyn meets JFK. Um, it, East New York in the '90s, in the '80s and '90s, is one of the worst neighborhoods in New York. I don't know if you, you ever seen the um, the documentary, the Seven Five. No, I about seen the one. precinct and the, it was like the most corrupt precinct in America. Yeah, yeah, that was the precinct for my neighborhood. Great, yeah. great. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was so much drugs and like crime over there, and it was like. You know, and then in the eighties and nineties, like the crack was like I was born. In, I came up in the nineties, but my family told me like crack was like r- running rampant through the hood. When when did crack start? What year? Like what was the big? I think in late seventies, late seventies, mm-hmm. uh, mid by mid eighties, it was like on every. I just moved from Deep Crown Heights, and it still is fucked up over there. I yeah, mean, it's crazy. It's like yeah. the divide between like low income housing and yes. then Hasidic Jews. Yes. Who never, I mean, it's cr- insane. Yeah. The Hasids just own these buildings mm. and they run the price up and they run people out and they're like, they, I mean, half the houses over there are like slum houses. Yeah. And, and other million dollar homes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's completely nuts. I mean, we yeah. never like leave. And who owns the slum houses? So they're, they're pushing up the prices. The Hasidic Jews are pushing it up. Yeah. So then people have to leave and just uh-huh. find places to, to like squat. But the Hasidic Jews, I mean, I hate, I mean, the Hasidic Jews are renovating these places to bring up the rent, but there's the renovations are like yeah. paper thin, yeah. horrible spackle yeah. Yeah. And that if you just touch a wall, it like crumbles. It's yeah. Like yeah. All a bunch of bullshit. I remember like where I grew up, like around the block of my house, I remember being like seven, eight years old was the headquarters of the Latin Kings gang. And the Latin Kings, tell me, about, I don't know anything about that particular they were huge okay. in New York. They started They're, in New York. Yeah, I believe so. They started in prison in New York. Yeah, and they were huge in New York, like because they had such a big Latino community. Yeah. yeah. Were you scared? Were you? Were no. you? Did you ever get in? See, no uh, one gets. No, I wasn't. I wasn't scared. Like I was. That? I was young. I was so young, and like they, they, you, they don't. They didn't generally like just go around doing crime. Like you just saw them. They used to have yellow flags or yellow. That, that was their their flag. What, like they would be holding them, or they yeah, like they'll have them like you know wrapped around their face, wrapped around their head, wrapped around. Just be a lot of yellow flags. The house had a lot Fuck. of yellow flags on it. Yeah. Did your parents move you because they were like, well, he's eleven now, he's getting of age to? Yeah, they were like, my mom and dad were just like, we we gotta you know we gotta get him out because as hard as you try, it, you you know you get you you start going outside, you, it's easy to fall into that. Like, well, what about your older siblings? Because how much older are they? I'm the youngest of five by a lot. My my oldest my oldest sister is 18 years younger than me. I mean, older. 18 than me. years older. Oh, wow, that's yeah. a big. That's yeah. a. Yeah, my other sister's 15. My brother's 10, and then I have one sister's one year older than me. Okay, are yeah. you close with her? I'm close with all of them. Yeah, 
really the 18 that's a huge difference that would yeah. feel like an aunt or an uncle to me just that's the, my big sister i mean yeah she, it's kind of like a she's kind of like, it's kind of like a mom figure kind of because mm-hmm. she kind of she was so you know she, but yeah no yeah we're all close once you get to that age it's it's it, you're able to respect them as like an elder yeah i feel like my sister's like six years older, which is just old enough to be like, bitch, you don't get to tell me what to do. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But yeah. not close enough to be buds. Yeah. You yeah. Just have one, one sister? One sister, yeah. Right. And it's so... Well, in Hispanic culture, like, you got to respect elders even if it's like a year or two older. Like, you, it's very, like, deference-based. Even to, like, your year-older sister? Yeah. Like, there's deference to her? Yeah. How so? It's always... De- like, that's just the structure of, like, how you're raised because they raise you, like, in the event of something happening to the elder it's clear who the next person in charge would be and is that because it's just there's been a longer time period where it's more volatile where they might need to take over they might need to like I, i'm not sure why i think it's just a tradition of yeah. how it is like my mom was the head of the family like and now my sister is the, my older sister is the head of is it is there more women as the head of the family in this or is well, it just of, in your like, of like of the oh, siblings of, of the, the siblings. siblings yeah of got the it, siblings got it, got now it. is my now is my sister and like the other like the aunts and stuff they're they've aged out of being able to like be in control you know like to control sure. the family because they've just gotten older so now they don't have like the energy to like keep it together keep a family together so now my sister's like the head of the family we, we, did it feel like she was like she was the head when it came to like the funeral who and my the, mom. No, you're, yeah, with your mom's funeral. Like, My was sister? your sister like. Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah, she's the head when it comes to everything, yeah. I mean, that's what I think about with, because I have, I have divorced parents, and on one side I have three other siblings, and on one side I have one sibling. Yeah. And it definitely, like, when I think about my parents getting older, it's like one of these three siblings, I'm like, oh, we have a, we have a support system. Yeah. And then the other two, I'm like, it's just me and her yeah. fucking in the wild. So yeah. at least four siblings, it's, it's. Yeah. A support system is very important. Like, we were very together. And that, like, it changed my, I don't know if it did it for you also, but, like, it changed that really, I know I said, like, the big J, but this really changed my like how I view stand up comedy, like going through those last few months, like more than more than the Tonight Show, more than any credit, like it solidified my feeling of like, no, I'm a comedian. Like the confidence that I was able to get just because I was going through such like a dark time in the daytime and then just coming and performing at night was like really like, oh, you're a comedian. This is a job. Yeah. 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 This like, is a job. Did you have to do. Yeah. 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 It's, to- it's so crazy. I right. totally agree. Right. I used to have a thing like, I used to have a thing. I mean, I guess we all have it where like you ever be on stage and then like, like people you respect are in the room, so it kind of makes you feel like weird about like how you perform. Like you really want to do well, like you want to impress them, like because you know you want them to think For you're sure. funny, and you kind of feel like an imposter in front of them, even though they probably feel the same way. You know, it's just a feeling. I used to feel that, but after this, like I kind of it doesn't feel that way. Like I, it doesn't feel that way at all. Like I don't care who's in the room. I'm like no, like I I belong here. Like this is my thing. And like the credits didn't really do that for me. It was just kind of like being able to perform because I thought I would have to quit comedy. Really? Well, not quit, but I just was like, I thought I'd never find humor again. Have you, have you, uh, did you, are you in therapy? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you start because of this? No, I, well, I started, uh, it just coincided, I started like seven months ago. And then it all fell into that, yeah. But that therapist is like, oh, you seem pretty, oh, fuck, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk some shit. (laughs) Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, therapy helps. Therapy definitely helps. Sure. A lot of times I feel like I gotta like, I go to therapy and then I gotta relay it to like my siblings. Like, like, they're like going through therapy through me because I'm like. Really? Yeah, because I'm like, you you shouldn't do this, probably not a good the, you know, habit that you have, you shouldn't do this. You That's fun. I'd, I would love for my younger sibling to tell me, like, "Hey, just so you know, this habit you have." Yeah, like, shut I the fuck up. I would do the Joseph. opposite of whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're pretty understanding. They think I'm like enlightened. Like they think like I'm. Oh, like, yeah? So, yeah, they think I'm like a yoga enlightened douche. <laughs> Were douche. you the funny one in the family? I'm one of them, but my family's funny. But yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm yeah, one yeah. of the funny guys. Yeah, but it's weird, like, because even now, like, my family will see my stand up, and I'm like, they probably don't even like. It's hard for your family to see you as funny when you're the youngest, because you're just like the youngest. Like, sure, like, sure. They see me as like a little kid. They don't see me as like comedian. You know, like, I'd love for my little brother to do stand up. I beg, I beg him. I say, I'll take you on the road. I'd <laughs> really, love to is have he a, funny? Why would you wish that on him? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, he's funny, like, uh, like. It's hard to tell. Like he's into the memes and the whatnot, and I feel like he has good taste. And he's it's a dark sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. it's a very fucked up sense of humor. He's a, a Reddit boy. Yeah, oh, so, you love the Reddit you know, boys. I'd yeah. be nervous. I'd be like, you cannot say that on stage. Yeah. You're opening for me. That's yeah. too dark for you. Yeah. Me. Did, when you came back, was it weird? I remember like hearing that your mom had passed, and then yeah. you came back to the cellar, and I remember being like, 
you I know, remember saying something in like, passing. Hey, I had well, heard it, uh, you know. I had heard it, and I like you know. It's like, well, I know you enough to be like, hey, I'm sorry, and you don't know if it's like, am I doing this for me to like be like, hey, just I'm a friend, yeah, <laughs> or like, like you don't know whether you just don't say anything because then you yeah. also don't know if someone's like, oh, okay, they didn't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I know. Listen, I've been, I've been you before. Sure, like, I, I've had sure. friends lose the thing, and I've been in that place where you don't know. Um, I, I would say that overwhelmingly, everybody who I know who has dealt with something like this, you, it's always like, yeah, you say you give your condolence. Like that's never bad. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm never gonna be like offended by you saying, hey, I'm sorry about like it. Whether you're like whether we're close or not, like it's still. I, I think it's still in good judgment and in good character if somebody you know is losing somebody to tell them my condolences. Now, I will say, and this is like where the comedian in me comes, there are people who just don't know what to say Dude, and they crazy. start searching for shit. Don't do that. Like what? It's, give, it's what did they do? Just give your condolences, say I'm sorry for your loss, and that's it. You don't have to try to make it better. You they don't try have to and try make to, it better. That's they try the to thing make that it would better. piss me off where they'd be like, well, maybe this is like a, a moment we for don't you need to... that. We don't need that. <laughs> we do this not need that. This is just going to make you a deeper artist. And yeah. I'd be like, hey, why don't you go fuck yourself immediately? Right. It, yeah. That happened so much where I, I started, I started la like, it, it became funny because it was like, how, you're saying, how can you think this is like good thing to say? He'll always be with you. That's what people would say to me. He'll don't worry, you'll be always you. be able to connect. And I'm like, who are you? Yeah, and like, no, what the fuck sure. are you talking about? passed away. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not here. That's the problem. Right. Right, right. And that, yeah. that is the most offensive part of me about like religious thought where I'm like, I'm fine with you having it. But when you push it on someone, oh, it's family. like that's another the, thing with my family, like the religious thing. Yeah. Uh, that, so who's religious? My dad's side, very religious. And that like, what, what religion? Christian. Christian. Yeah. yeah Christianity. It kind of we kind of it kind of was like a little clashy because it's like, you know, they, they really push it like that's what they lean on. Like, so it's everything is like that. Like, that's like you got to be grateful because this is the plan and this is how it's supposed to go and it's in a better place and all that stuff and you're like but i'm sad though yeah like and they're like but you don't don't be sad and like, but that but i'm sad because i lost my mom and i always remember my my stepfather's mom's funeral she was catholic and like it was a catholic funeral yeah where like my mom it was, was more yeah it was more about God, God than it was person, about yeah, her. And I yeah. was like, what are we talking about? Yeah. And it had that old language where it's so, the text is so old that it's clearly it was a time where there were different gods, yeah. like competing. And so it sounded like Games of Thrones again. They would be right. lines yeah. of like, she's off to the one true God. And I'm like, yeah. what is this propaganda for? <laughs> yeah. We're all... Yeah. Who gives yeah. a fuck? Yeah. I remember I had one, I had like a, 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 my, my cousin's girlfriend, she came up to me and honestly, I, you know, when you like, sometimes you like, people are talking to you and you like, I'm not even going to bail you out. I'm going to let you like, oh, just, dig yourself. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. just going to keep like digging in it. And dude, it just unraveled. Like it started with like, she was like, hey, like, I'm sorry. If, like, I'm so, it was the day of the funeral. She's like, I'm so sorry for like your loss, which is fine. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, how are you doing? I'm like, you know, it's very tough, but I'm trying to like keep going. I'm trying to stay positive. My mom was like in a lot of pain. And then she's like, yeah. And it's like, she was like so young. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's tough that she's young. And she's like, and and then you, like, you're so young and, like, your career, like, you're doing so well. And then, like, even now, it's like you continue to do well. Like, your mom's never going to be there. She's never going to see their accomplishment. And I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, but, and then, like, what when you get married? Like, your mom's oh not going to be at your God. wedding. And then your kids, like, look at all these little kids. You have no kids. Your mom's not going to get to see your kids, girl. Bro. She just kept digging and digging and digging. And at one point, like, at one point, I was like, are you trying to make me cry? And she was like, oh my God, no. Like, like that's not what I'm doing at all. I'm like, you just keep bringing up the worst thing possible. And she was like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't know what to say. Like, wow, I just... wow. That, that is incredible. Yeah. And just say you're sorry. That's it. I'm sorry. My condolences. I that's it. I what she was trying to do. She must have just I feel like they, it's just, it. she's, she's, it's like making a movie out yeah. of it for, for one's own entertainment. Yeah. Remember when you were like, is this when you said, oh, I want to say I'm sorry, but is it for me? 
Yeah. That is for you. Yeah. Like, sure. That is for you to feel whatever you want to feel about it. That's not for me. I mean, you're just bringing up points that, like, logically I've thought about. Yeah, I know my yeah. mom won't Or it's like, I think it's like wanting to engage, like, connect. Maybe it was to connect with you, like, on a deeper level. Like, this person wants to Maybe. be close to you. Because then she, so, was, like, so she like, was like, my aunt, she was like, she was like, my aunt passed away from cancer. And then when she passed away, her kids went crazy. So, like, make sure you don't go crazy. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's it's, insane. It's insane. This is an insane human being. I know. I told that story. I told that story a couple of times. But there's like, I, I kept bringing this up because one of the one of the brightest moments in the whole hell of 2021 for me and my family was in the last two days of my mom's life, like we knew that she was going to pass and my whole family got to come and say goodbye to her as she was like able to understand and hear and everybody told her how much they loved her and they got to say their piece and they had to say goodbye. If there is a God, I feel like that was the only thing that like... I was like, okay, maybe this is the God. Because other than that, like, I would argue that, like, I don't, I didn't see any mercifulness at all in the last like three months of my mom's life. But that was fine. But even, even in those situations, like, I kept telling my family, like, comedy is just such a crazy thing. Like, I'm, we're literally, and my mom is like on her deathbed, and like, I'm still, there's still things going on that I'm like, why, why is he doing that? Why is, why is he sure. saying, why is he saying this? Dude, like, it's, what, what? It's, I, I was <laughs> driving home from my dad. That we found out he died. My friends driving me back to Ithaca and. I was laughing and crying back and forth. Same. Yeah. Because you would be crying and you'd be so upset. And then like you'd hit like a red light and be like, fuck, we're just like going to deal with my dead dad yes. right now. Like yes. we're just, are, that's what's happening. And it's so surreal. Yes. And you have to like take a shit. While your dad is dying, you know yeah. what I mean. You're yeah, like, you just got to live life. Yeah, like, right. life has like, to I'm continue. still a human being, <laughs> yeah. and I'm in the bathroom yeah. right now, just yeah. thinking about my dead dad yeah. on the shitter. I think <laughs> yeah. it brings out the humor. People. I, my girlfriend had two grandparents die, and I watched both Zoom funerals. But it is funny. Even regular people's eulogies will have not non comedians' eulogies will have a little joke in there, and I think it's because it is part of the humor is part of the visceral experience right i mean i have a cousin who got up to say a speech at like the wake at the house and it was like anti-vax rhetoric for like 15 minutes no way I, I are you serious god, i swear to god he opened up he opened up like this is how he opened he's like he's like i have something i need to say and then he was like i'm not vaxxed and i'm not getting vaxxed oh my god <laughs> and then he oh. went down like a spiral <laughs> he went down like a spiral of how him not being vaxxed how he wanted to see my mom but he didn't get the opportunity because he wasn't vaxxed got and, it and like the vaccine is messing up people's lives and <laughs> it's not allowing oh people to god. like <laughs> and did did he did he bring it back around to no. He just ended with well, some. Well, he, he kind of like went into a Fuck story. Fauci. He went into the story, but like the story factually was wrong. Like I was like talking to us. I was like, that's not true. Like he's like, he's like embellishing on stories and like not saying the truth. He was like, he was like, he's like, she came to me in a dream and said that she was going to pass away on Thursday. And I'm like, but it was Tuesday. <laughs> and, and he was like, just going and going. And going, I was like, she didn't pass on Thursday. She passed on a Tuesday, and that was, it was just like a spark. And like, she I came remember, to me and she said, "These vax, it's full of shit." That's what, like, that's like the lying. kind of stuff that he was saying. Like, he was like, she came to me in a dream. It was like, you're doing everything right, and I'm gonna go home. On oh a, my on man, let me tell you, my grandpa died uh, like like <laughs> at the end of 2020, but for his funerals later. And we, ha I had a cousin. Uh, he he served in Afghanistan. And he's, he's like stationed in Africa right now. And he wrote in a letter and it was more about my grandfather was like a big pacifist. Mm -hmm. And it became like a letter defending like American foreign politics. And he was and like, they, read this at the funeral. And it, it, they read it after this funeral and it made me live yeah. it. And I don't engage with my family. I'm just, I'm just there to get through it. I'm yeah. not there to like make a big stink. Yeah. But they were reading this letter and I felt a rage. Yeah. yeah. Because I, it was like, he, he said, you know, uh, 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 Grandpa Jack and I, we disagreed about certain things. But I remember when 9-11 happened and we walked over to the rubble. And I think in that moment, my grandpa understood that sometimes violent force is necessary. <laughs> and I was like, get the fuck out of here. Get the people fuck out of here. People with a microphone. It's people get a microphone and yeah. lose yes. their minds. They do. It's because we sometimes wild. forget, I think, because we always have a microphone. We're yes. doing this. Yes. That some people, it's like eulogies, wedding toast. That is their th one of their three chances yeah. in life to be like, hey, no one yeah. asked me. Yeah. But the vax is bullshit. Right, right. But we're kind of taught, like, in our thing is, like, we're kind of taught to be, like, 
less is more when you have a microphone. Yeah. Like yeah. you have to like pick your words wisely. You don't just go on a rambling like thing. Like for the most part, like they don't have that. So they'll just grab the mic and they're like, "All right, here we go," and they'll just start like speaking from like the top of the head without like no filter and just. I, I mean, we saw it like so many times. It's like a couple times. I mean, even at the funeral, we like had to like, rap, yo, wrap it up, man. Like, oh, the wrap it up thing. Totally, yeah. yeah. Like, You're giving him the light, yeah, explaining so the light. Up, I it, mean, we would do these like self help things. My mom was like into landmark, mm -hmm. and you'd get a microphone and you would like say your story. What's that, landmark? Like, I'm sorry. It's like a cult where basically it's not really a cult, but it's like a self help yeah. uh, forum that you go to. And at some point, you like say things into the mic. And I mean, these mics would have to be wrenched out of people's yeah. hands. They, and they would be yeah. like to the last drop. And, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and uh, also, I think my dad was a bad guy. You yeah. Know? And it was you, like. You give people the ability to just speak openly. Oh, man. People love it. And, I, and it's weird because, like, they say fear of speaking is like the public speaking. But, like, once they get going, yeah. like, once they see, like, because most people think, like, they think like you go on stage, you like and and if people don't laugh, you die. Nothing happens. Like people just don't laugh. Yeah. Time passes, you get off stage, you continue your life. That's just what it is. Once I feel I've like never, people I've never I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> A bombing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, do the same five minutes of jokes every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, but like you give, once people like, I feel like once people realize that, they're like, oh, I, I'm just talking and it's okay. And like the floodgates open. Hear me? Yeah, the yeah. floodgates it's, open. It's so crazy. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It is, um, yeah, my mom did that at my dad's funeral and my dad hated my mom. Hated her. Wait, they were still married? No, my mom's gay. Okay, you yeah. know my mom's gay. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I didn't know oh, what oh, happened oh, before oh. after your dad died. Oh, well before. And he despised this. I mean, so he she came her. to the funeral. Oh, yeah. yeah Did yeah. he want her not? Forgive me. I've, he literally wrote in his will. He will rise from the grave and haunt us if she steps foot on the property. And she did it anyway. And gave a speech. And what was wow. her speech? Was it anti-vax too? But just a different it vaccine? It was all about the their rugby vaccine. days. It was a riff ago. session. It was comedy. It was a full stand up set. Did you try to talk to like, hey, mom, maybe don't do this. I mean, I was like over here being like, you got to put it. You put the. Yeah. And she was like, oh, and also, yeah. we remember Robbie. Remember yeah. when you came? And it was like. And everyone knew that she wasn't wanted there. So it was like. Yeah, it but I energy. mean, he, she, and she's like a very lucid, down to earth human. I mean, it just, the microphone. We've is talked a, about it on the podcast, but I think dead people's wishes, they the reason to respect them is because when you're dying and you have some wishes, you want to believe that they're going to be respected. And so it's important to do your best to respect those wishes so you can be comforted by the fact that your wishes might be respected. Yeah. I see. I Were see. you mad at her at the time for no, going? No, no. He's dead. I'm like, just everybody try and have a good time. Yeah, it's us. Just 23, 23 you're really this. Yeah. You're really oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, just whoever. Yeah. the His fucking insane ex, or his insane wife was there. I mean, there were so many people there that I was like, fuck you. You fucking did this to my dad. You suck. But I didn't. But I was just like, this is for the people here and not for him. He's gone. He's Was it sudden or did you know it was coming? Very sudden. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was like. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely in shock still at the funeral. I was probably, like, the closest person to him. So I was just, like... Because everybody, if you're very close to the Sounds like everyone guys, else there was an enemy, so... Well, they were... Bar. Yeah, I mean, there were a few enemies there. I mean, there was, like... Uh, Even your you enemies, know. you kind of want to be there for the final word. Yeah. I just think, and this is what I hated about, like, my cousin's thing. Because it was about my grandpa, like, his what his thoughts were. Where it was, like... You don't get to win. You're trying to get like the final word in an argument with someone yeah. who's dead. Yeah. So why, this doesn't why, count. Why did he try Tear to tear up that? that letter? I don't. I don't know. Well, I imagine because he felt guilty, and I would have. I would guess. I mean, I'm projecting. You tell me that maybe your maybe your cousin cousin for sure. Everyone, maybe he every, felt guilty. Everyone thought that's what it was. Yeah, he felt guilty, and so everyone he felt like, "Well, I have to justify this. I did see her, in fact, in a dream." Yeah, and she—you're wrong about the date. She was still there till Thursday. <laughs> you called it too early. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I think that's that's a, a, of it too, and also, I mean, it's such an emotional time too, where maybe you know you're just like, that's like a thing, a conversation you probably want to have with your grandfather that he didn't get to have. Like, do you think if you were not a comedian? And you didn't weren't able to express yourself in other ways that you would have spoken. Like it's interesting when people who do this for a living, because you would have, you could have probably uh, uh, delivered the room into not necessarily laughter, but you could give them a speech that was structured, had a <clears throat> had feeling, or just move people. You know, you're 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 an orator. I, I would have got too emotional. Mm. That was that was it. Like I would have, I I I as a comedian, I hate to see the person go up there and can't get through a speech. Cause like at first you feel for him, but then after a while you're like, 
you get that one. Yeah. You get you get you get one. <laughs> yeah. You get one of these. Yeah. Two, one of these. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when it's like a silent room of three hundred people and you can't speak, everyone starts looking at like, is he gonna get through this? Or and I didn't want to do that to people, so I was like, I'm gonna shut yeah. this one out. It, was it weird that feeling? I remember the feeling hitting me where I was like, oh my, when I all of a sudden was like, oh, I'm like a person with a dead parent. I'm one of those people now. Yes. It's yes. like the most bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm at the point like I have to like remind myself of that every day. Yeah. yeah. That's the freaky. The yeah. weird thing is that people don't get is they're like, they think that you're dealing with death and you're like, what? Fuck death. Whatever about death. Yeah. I'm dealing with there was something here and it's not there anymore. Yeah. I can't grab it. I can't touch it. I can't call that. This is insane. I remember like I, I would get like blackout drunk. Yeah. And his my dad's wife would call me the next day and be like you like called your dad like two, three times last night you know what oh i mean and i was my like God. like you yeah. just don't you don't get it you're like like i remember being like sure 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 he's dead he's dead he's dead but eventually we're going to talk you know what right, i mean right. and it's then it starts to hit you where you're like oh this is why people say it is so bad because it is like the absence of this person yeah it's not just the death or the sickness or whatever it's this like for sure yeah, yeah. i mean for me it was like i used to i spoke to my mom every day but one of the things really like yeah yeah we were extremely close i spoke to her every day you yeah. see her often um i i when i used to go on the road she always knew where i was going and when i would land i would call her and be like oh you know i'm here and wherever and like so like when i started going back on the road again not being able to do that was like a weird thing where i was just like oh shit dude the fl- i got like a flat tire once and <laughs> called my dad and was like oh you well, are dead yeah. <laughs> technology I, Kenny Ortega, who I knew, who who passed away like two years ago, you know, his Instagram still exists, and his Instagram, I think, is uh, Comedy Ken, and every time I go to tag, like, the seller or something, it pops up, Yeah. and I see it, and it's just, like, it's this constant, like, yeah, yeah. that dude's dead, man. Yeah, that's He's, wild. Kenny was young, too. Yeah, fuck, dude. I mean, that, that, that funeral, what was so weird about that funeral, other than the owner of the comedy club not coming to it, that made me really upset. Uh, that he always performs at, but did it bother people? Yo, it bothered me because I knew how much he had worked there. This yeah. is a guy who's doing twenty percent of the time at the club. Yeah, but it was so weird because there was like a contingency of comedians, but he had kind of isolated himself in the in the New York community yeah. to like the LOL crowd, mm-hmm. and so so it's like fifteen comics, but it was much more of like his community, his yeah. family, his mother, yeah. and it was so serious. And I only knew Kenny in the context of like green room Joker. fucking around. So it was like, it was weird to see so much sincerity when Kenny had never been sincere. In, in, and I don't know. I don't know if he would have, he would have enjoyed it, but like you wanted there to be something else. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like a month later they did like a roast battle, a roast, a roast of him, uh, like at, at this place, but I was out of town and yeah. You know, it's the the further you you push the funeral from the thing happening, the weirder it all feels. Like you do want something that encapsulates the the, the rush person. of feeling. Everyone's feeling it right now, yeah. and then later you're filling out a doodle to make something work, and you're like, "This feels weird now." Yeah, mm-hmm. like a strange, yeah. like like we're just doing it for the sake of doing it now. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, funerals are are like weird, man. It's like a it's like a weird thing because it's like it's funny, but it shouldn't be. Like stuff there, like. If you're a funny person, you will find a lot of funny shit at a funeral. Well, I think it's just so, it's just so, f- I, I don't know about other cultures really. I just know American culture or Christian culture, and there's just not enough to make, let you feel. It's just so regimented. It's just so, yeah. it doesn't feel organic to the experience. Right. I want a big artsy fartsy funeral of just people in a circle doing stories and, and having a good time. I don't know. Yeah, don't roast me. Uh, you don't want to roast. <laughs> no, you don't want to roast. No, I mean, I think roast. I was having to talk with a comedian. This like, I think roast have gone like too off, like on on the deep end. Like, I think it was somebody was telling me that they gave their jokes to Dave, like to tell. Like, they were like, "Oh, what do you think of these jokes?" And tell was like, "Like, what are you doing, man? Like, you go, go surface level. Like, you're talking about this guy's dead parent. Like, oh like, yeah, that's yeah. so like deep. Like, I feel like you make fun of like, oh, he always dressed tacky. You know, that's fine. It is, but like. <laughs> You start making fun of people's dead parents? Like- Yo, I, I I did a couple. James Pontello, when I first started, I started, like, Rose Battles taught me, like, what joke writing was. Like, the yeah. beginning of me doing yeah. stand-up. And, I mean, 
you'd find out someone had a dead parent and you'd be like, ching, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry, that joke's, a, that joke's a little stale, like James's mom. <laughs> yeah. And you say it really flippantly. And like people in the roast world, they they engage on that level. Yeah. But then when you do think about it, you're like, whoa, this is really Yeah, I, I wouldn't heavy. be cool with that. Like, I, I, I wouldn't be cool with that. If like somebody but you're talking that. about all the humor you see in the thing. What prevents you from wanting to talk about any of? But it's not disrespectful to the person. Though. Sure, like the humor, like and the and, and what I found funny was like what was going on to the thing. But it's not disrespectful to the person who's like that thing about your cousin. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's a. But even that wasn't disrespectful to the person. That was a yeah. person who felt guilty about not seeing, yeah, yeah. Uh, expressing his ex- his reason of why he couldn't. That yeah. was, if anything, that was like, man, I couldn't see somebody I wanted to see. That was like a genuine emotion that he was feeling. It wasn't disrespectful. But like, listen, if if also like, if if you were a roast comic and you passed and probably roasting you would right. probably sure. make sense, you know? But my mom wasn't like a roast, like, you know, she wouldn't find that funny. It'd be funny like, if Jeff Ross's funeral was just <laughs> Like serious, really yeah, solid. yeah. Super Catholic affair. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's in the roast community uh, and oh, is just as good as a laugh. That's the yeah. point, that's the thing. Is like yeah. Matt Moran's funeral. People are going to be chanting AIDS, AIDS, yeah. AIDS. Yeah, and he would love that. He would love that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We would all wear no sleeves. Yeah. Matt Moran. Yeah, but yeah. So if you were in a roast and somebody talked about your mom dying, you would be like, not cool. Um, I don't know. I think I think part of me, like the comedian in me, would just be like, oh, it's a joke, and just take it. But I don't know. I guess it's too soon. Like part of me would also want to fight. Yeah. If you did that. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. But I don't do roast. That's why I don't do sure. roast. Like, did I you ever? No. I don't Never. make fun of people like that, though. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, like, I feel like a, a big part of my upbringing is, like, if you make fun of somebody's dead parent, like, you, you're you inviting them to fight. Like, well, you talk about yeah. respect, and it's it's just so different. You know, I don't know what it's like, but, uh, but I definitely feel like uh, Nico White... I just will never forget. I have a joke about my mom told me you're an actor when you <clears> act <throat> like you're not depressed. I said mm-hmm. you're a yoga teacher when you go fuck yourself. Yeah. Nico was like, "That's why. What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. And it was just so funny. It was just like a, a like, oh, we have different uh, hierarchies or, or how we view this. And right. I'm like, fuck them. Yeah. I'm like, fuck them. Yeah. And I feel you're on the fuck them spectrum yeah. too. Oh, and no. uh, yeah. uh, it's very. You have, I, I can't imagine you ever saying that about no <laughs> even but, your sister. But if you no, I don't know. If you if you look at like. Black, like a lot of the, I mean, at least in New York, like the black comics, a lot of them don't do the roast. Like, they, sure, it's most yeah, like very a, true, a and white, they don't rip their family. Apart. And I also yeah. wouldn't feel comfortable because I'm not, I'm not in this day and age going to be fucking around with roast that touches anything race related right. at all. Right. I said, what but, about Pedro Gonzalez? I'm still scared about, but it was a funny joke. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying I wouldn't mind you roast me though. Like I wouldn't yeah, mind yeah. what you said about me. Like I, like you couldn't upset me if I was saying something about me as when a, I had a girlfriend. A I'll tell you, I was always fine with the parents, but I always said if you say something shitty about my girlfriend, that's gonna make me upset. Because yeah, that like might hurt the, her like, feelings. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah. she didn't agree right, to this. Right. So it's like my family or my girlfriend. Like if you say something about, it, I'm gonna get it. Like say it about me. Like you can make fun of. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll give you like a free pass. But it's also like I also don't want to make fun of you like that. Like, yeah, I don't want to like that's not funny to yeah. me. Like, like I know me. I suck at roast for that reason. I yeah. suck at them so I was, much. Like I remember like, when they used to ask me, like they were like, "No, roast your friend. It'll be fine." I'm like, but I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's not like I enjoy watching them, but I some of the shit I'm like, yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's move on to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. This has got to. This has got to stop. Do you have a this has got to stop for us today? Uh yes, um, what did I have? I I forget. I I what, I would you have? I can I can do one. Uh, uh, this is this random. You do a lot of college gigs, yeah? Yeah, I'm trying to stop. <laughs> yeah, they're not good. They they, they are pretty rough. <laughs> it's rough. always a mix. Like sun, sometimes they'll be decent. Yeah, I mean after the pandemic, less and less. I just remember my manager saying to me like, oh, these college gigs. It's a really uh you know build up your following, and I was like. I what are, got, what I are you think, talking about? There's six people in a cafeteria. I think I've got one follower. <laughs> They're telling their friends that block me just five in case. years ago. Yeah, but is it's really funny. I had some 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 joke. I went to the kid. I I want. I need a dinner, and I said, "Is there a cafeteria? I'll happily pay the daily fee." And they were like, "You do not want to eat at this cafeteria." And I've noticed now three college gigs. You can just mention the cafeteria sucking. And it's an applause break. And I'm like, oh, wow. oh this is yeah. not good. I guys. mean, that's the act. Yeah. You that's guys the are spending act. 40 grand, 50 grand, and your cafeterias, your food supply sucks. Yeah. And so, on behalf of college kids everywhere, 
I, I feel like uh, this has got to stop. Bad college cafeterias. These are growing boys and girls. Yeah. And uh, you got to take care of this shit. There's too much money. These colleges are scamming everybody. Every college I ask them, did you get a discount because of Zoom? They say no. And I'm like, that's insane. Yeah, no, you kids are getting full, full, fucked. Full price, room and board, wow, and they did it at home. Price. Yes. Full price. These kids are getting <laughs> fucked. Yeah. And, and their and parents. They made them, you know what they made them do? They made them move into the dorms to do classes on Zoom. Like, so they're on campus, but only on Zoom. Just so, so they, they could charge they you charge for that fucking dorm board. Room. Well, college in general might have to stop. That might be yeah, the whole point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, thought, I yeah. thought that like the pandemic would would hit colleges because they they wouldn't be able to charge people this money. They their overhead fee would bury them. But instead, they just continued the scam yep. and not enough yeah. parents. Because I think it's like it's it's tough when you're a parent. You don't understand the system. The kid doesn't understand the system. Yep. I think they all should have been class action lawsuits against all colleges. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's that does have got to stop. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, one of my friends who's like very, you know, woke and uh, an adult was in grad school and he sh- was getting his MFA at Chicago and they were making him come back. And he was like, I'm not fucking doing it. Da, 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 da. And they were like, great. You just won't. We won't give you the credit. And it, he was just like, I mean, the longer I fight this, the longer I don't have a degree. I'm already in this deep. So he was just like forced to do it. Yeah. Monsters. And also lawsuits take a lot of money. The whole the whole enterprise of universities is completely fucked. I mean, I know carpentry from growing up and I went to school for philosophy and the ways that y- the university... Well, at least you got like a useful degree. Yeah, yeah. very much so. But uh, the amount of money I lost... I mean, it's just insane how much money I've gotten from the carpentry trade that I learned from my parents. It is comparable to how much money I lost I can tell you, my views, university. My views about like labor, like as a ch- child labor, like obviously there's bad child labor, but sometimes I'm like... Yeah, learn a trade instead of all this fucking oh God. generalized yeah, land education sure. that doesn't seem to lead to anything that specific. That you can learn for sure. on your own. You can read philosophy at the library. You can right. read all these things. You can't learn how to make a circuit, you know, for electric for yeah. an electrician or something in a book. You have to be shown that. So it's right. like all of this intellectual heady stuff is very much something that could be like a free I mean, it already is, but th- we're like, no, no, no. You need a degree yeah. in metaphysics. Can you help me install my AC when this is done? <laughs> Are you serious? Um, oh, I was going to hire someone to do it. <laughs> oh, my God. Why do comedians not know how to put in ACs? I've put in so many comedians' ACs. You there's, put there's it like in the There's like a window. service you provide? I, <laughs> no, it's I have this. a nightstand I need to construct, and I got two ACs I need oh to God. put together. I'll pay it's you a top a dollar. It's a square. And a square, you put the square within the well, unfortunately, square. Unfortunately, one square is smaller than this square, and if it falls out, it's going to turn someone to Close a square the on the floor. window on the square. <laughs> um, that's my, my biggest fear. I used to, I mean, I've, I have OCD anxiety things, but I, I always had these nightmares that I'd wake up, there'd be police sirens, I'd see red and blue, and I'd look at my window, and it'd be no AC. And I'd hear people downstairs like, oh my God, Are I Are you can't responsible for that death? I've always thought about, well, you look it up, and it, there's a shocking lack of deaths. It doesn't seem to happen very often. I mean, the chances of it falling and hitting somebody is kind of rare. If you're if you're on a 60th floor of a building in New York City, but most people, but they, the person has to be walking right under it. They have to not hear it coming. They have to not move out the way. Like th- also, th- the plug has to be in a way that can pull out of the wall. So if this thing tips, yeah, the plug is going to pull straight upwards and yeah. it's going to stop it from falling. Oh yeah, that's true. It'll so hang. the plug, if it's uh, and then it'll rip if it's too heavy though, right? Yeah, but they're never too heavy. Yeah, you this, know? this one's heavy. They're all heavy, but they're not too heavy. Do you understand the physics of that? Like, if this thing's coming straight out and going up, if you pull and it has prongs, yeah. no matter how heavy it is, the prongs... Just put, yeah. Early in unless my be- somebody kicks it. In my beginning stand-up, I had a long bit about not being able to put in an AC. I mean, I've done it for Stavros. I've done it for so many comics put in there. I can't believe you guys. Yeah. It's okay, so we'll easy. talk after this. Okay. Uh, do you have a This Has Got to Stop? I, I feel like my I do I remember what mine was. Yeah. But I I hope this I mean I hope this hasn't been done. But I just feel very strongly about this. I just really I I feel like we have to stop. Like I understand if you decided that you want to have kids, right? Mm. And and I understand that you you still want to do stuff. But I don't think that your kids should interfere with how I do stuff. So I don't I don't like it when people bring like I was flying. And I had I don't want to do kids on the plane, but I had a, I was I wasn't in regular I was I got upgraded to the to first class with my points, and there was a kid in in the first class. Like, why is your kid in first class? Mm. Like, why 
Why hasn't a plane, why hasn't an airline, I mean, I guess they will lose business. Why hasn't an airline been like, all right, kids have to sit. If you were a kid, you could only sit on, on this thing. The kid was crying. It was Seattle to New York. It was six and a half hours. But yeah, like one thing about first class should be there aren't kids. That's the yeah, benefit of first yeah. class. And one of the things about first class And the class kid was walking this- around. Like, she's coming into my cube. Like, <laughs> coming into my cube, like, slapping me on my Slapping knee. you? <laughs> yeah, like, slapping my leg. And, like, I'm looking at the pan. Because it's not the kid's fault. I'm looking at the pan. Like, is anyone going to get this kid? Like, he's, like, slapping my leg. I don't even like moving for pregnant people. Yeah, on the train. <laughs> I'm serious. You really went up from like reasonable I'm like, you're not to a fucking full ripple, dude. I'm, you I'm talking a kid? everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm not just yeah. talking plain. I'm talking everything. Like, I didn't fucking get knocked up. I don't. Why do I have to fucking move? I'm tired. Okay, so what's the solution? I don't disagree. No with more you. kids. No, no more, more kids. kids. <laughs> or separate planes for kids. I thought about that. I. What do you think of that? I, not not just daycare. kids. The kids and their parents. Because parents. The problem is not the kid. It's the parents. Like, parents deal with them so much that they're, like, immune to it. Mm-hmm. So, like, they don't see when their kid is being a nuisance. They're like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I, I totally think first class being, like, 18 and older for first class. We serve alcohol here. Like, turn it into that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. There's I alcohol here. That. There's adults here. Or even, here. like, the first half of the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not just first class. The problem is you fly with kids. Their ears get... Pop- they don't know how to pop their ears. Which is fair. They're so kids. it hurts them. And babies. Yeah. Don't fly with your freaking that's baby. The th- that's I, more. Babies is more. Kids yeah. is like, okay. I will always remember the, uh, it was a Louis C.K. bit. I'm sure you, where he he, uh, he says where people complain about his baby when he had a baby. He's like, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, I, I saw feel, that yeah. like, well, what? Yeah. The, what yeah. is the solution yeah. for? They have to get to see their dying. Listen, there's mom. no solution. I just need to complain about it. That's I it. The you. solution is you let me complain and continue on with your sure, life. Everybody sure. with kids. First class, I totally agree because they don't need that big chair either. Yeah. Part of first class is you get a nice, big, comfortable chair. Yeah. All the airlines suck. They all this suck. Is, this is their problem. Another industry that needs to collapse. One time I was on a flight and the, and there was this like kid being crazy and the kid came under the ch- under she went under the seat and she came up like <gasps> under my seat so she like when I like I was sleeping when I got up like the kid was getting up like in between oh my, my legs. god I would have had a full pain I would have kicked it right in the yeah. head I would have fucking knocked it out immediately yeah. she's like thing. and then the parent like dragged her like she was like <laughs> she was like crawling up so she was like on her knees and the parent grabbed her by the leg and dragged her back in like so she just got pulled oh my god you're like the in the seat. grudge that's yeah, insane yeah, she got pulled the scariest thing that ever happened to me with a baby on a plane I was I was a college kid and so I like my 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 to go bag was a grocery bag like it was you know putting it in the overhead mm. yeah and there's someone with a baby and a book fell from the plastic bag and like hit the baby's leg. This and, is why you're worried and, about the AC. And yeah, and the baby didn't cry. Wow, it seemed like it was okay. It was like it was like a play yeah. theater kid. Thank God. Oh, one act. Yeah, <laughs> one act hit the leg, and then the the stewardess uh, or the steward. What do you say now? Steward, airline attendant came over, and this woman. She did English was not her first language, and she said, "Like my baby, uh, he hit my baby's leg." Should how do I uh, file a lawsuit or sue? Are you serious? Yeah, and I my life flashed before my eyes, and this airline attendant who, if I could give her a thousand dollars, I would. Looking back on it now, she said, "Oh, did your baby cry?" And she said, "No." And she said, "Oh, then your baby's probably fine. You know, I have kids. Oh my Don't God. worry about it." And I mean, I wish I could go back and thank this thank this woman because she saved. What me. did you say? What were you doing the whole time? This was she happening? wanted to sue you. Yeah, yeah, and like. Yeah, she said it, and I'm sitting right next to her <laughs> for the rest of this flight. For the whole flight? <laughs> and uh, every day I thank God, because I also had an external hard drive in that bag, and I'm like, that would have killed oh. the baby. Um, so yeah. that's... that's you uh, don't thank God Just the material on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From prison. Um, yeah. Our final section. You better count your blessings. You better count your blessings. Uh, I didn't. I didn't inform you enough about the show. No, uh, no, no. But uh, but you're a, you're a quick learner. Do you have a blessing? Something you're thankful for? Like specific? Um, anything good happen to you in this life? In this life? Yeah. Today, this week. I'm very grateful for uh, my roommates, Michael and Ethan. Uh, a couple of days ago, I got blackout curtains, and I slept. Knowing you, the moment you say blackout, my brain already goes to drunk. I heard blackout and then I heard curtains. I was like, oh, surprise. Ah. Oh. Like I heard blackout. And I was like, oh, curtains. I haven't drank in like a year. That's really? True. I, no, I drank oh. over on Halloween. Oh. But besides that. It's still good for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, 
I fell asleep and I at 3 p.m. Michael came in and he was like, dude, I, I thought you were dead. And I got today. Up. It was two days ago, two days ago. And of his own accord, he just was like, he was like, hey, you're going to be mad at yourself if you wake up when past the sun is down. You and don't I set alarms. Over. No, I didn't set an alarm because the blackout curtains, I wasn't used to them. Yeah. I was used to the sun coming in and waking me up, but I always... That's how you wake up every day? Like, like... Yeah, Th- what? That's how Who I wake up, too. I, yeah. I, I, I did, I did the, um, the the Looney Bin in Kansas, and they and they got the comedy condo has no windows. So you... Oh, my God. You have no idea what time it is. Like, 3 p.m. Did you it sleep? Could be for, you sleep pretty well. Yeah. Like, it's like a cave. I know, that's you, what I'm saying. But you're a little, it's a little disoriented. I think no I windows fucks you up, man. Yeah, yeah. I once went home, like, for the holidays in college, and the, the, my room, they were changing it to something, so I slept in the basement. At first, I liked it because it was dark. I slept yeah. in. And then after a couple of days, I felt like, I'm losing my mind, I think. Yeah. Something yeah. about this feels like, yeah. like a jail cell. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, my blessing, um, I did, I, I, I guess I'm calling it a monthly show, Sesh Comedy Club. It's over yeah. here on Eldred Street. I just wanted to like figure out a place that I could like work material. And I, I stole this idea from Mike Birbiglia. I saw him uh, at the Bell House before I was doing stand-up. And he was working on new stuff. Did 20, brought up Mulaney for 15, get everyone back. Then he did new stuff, brought up Che, new stuff, Sashir closed it out so I, I did that i wanted a space where i could uh, just work you know yeah. i tell people ever since i started working at the cellar i felt like the percentage of shows that i felt like i had to do pretty well on changed it used of to course. just be like 20 percent. i had to do really well the rest i could explore yeah now it feels like 80 percent. Right. i can't fucking lose well that's the thing is now when we do bar shows that's yeah. the problem you're the heavy hitter right so then you go and you're like I don't want to just do all new shit. Yeah. Like I'm the one that they have is like sure. The, and I remember running a weekly and having like, oh, we got so and so, and then they come and they're like, so no uh, pad. I took yeah. a trip yesterday, and yeah. and you're like, what the fuck, dude? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're getting paid twenty five dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you the only comic <laughs> paid this whole show? Yeah, I never. I don't. I don't like. I don't come up with new and like big chunks. There's always small things that continue to grow. So I'll throw it out. Like I'll do it at the cellar, but it's always like a small for thing sure that just keeps. But growing. sometimes I got those stories. So nice. I have stories, and man, yeah, no, I, like I would definitely not work embark on a new story. Like at the cell, like, stories are so no, tough, man. Because no. you're like, once you once you get in that roller coaster, you're like, well, no. yeah, all the misses. The lounge, the lounge on Mondays, of, do it, huh? Do the lounge on Mondays. Oh yeah, I do the lounge, but even that is like three, four minutes, and there's yeah. still a pressure. No, to do I mean, a- I mean, just the whole night. If you're booked on Mondays, this is what Louis said to me. He was like, nobody's ever watching you on a Monday. Nobody's around. Just yeah. do your new shit then. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cares about my When I have as many gotta, spots as you do there, I will start yeah. fucking around on Mondays. But I for the meantime, say, I'm going to murder that Monday show as hard as I can. I will say that is an annoying... Louis also was like, you can just just tr- bring it up on stage and you'll, the bit, you'll find the bits. And I was like, fuck you, dude. Everybody yeah. is yeah. cheering for you if you take a shit on stage. Sure, sure. And you have endless stage time. But so, yeah. so I was very, uh, what was cool about it, and, and by the way, this podcast is coming, it's the first Sunday of every month. I can't wait for people to start asking me for making enemies from people I don't book. Yeah. I haven't booked anything in a long time. And I tell people, if you want to make a lot of friends in a short period of time and lifelong enemies over a long period of time, start booking a show. Yeah. Like and a uh, show? What? Yeah, because people are like, why have you never booked me on this? Or like, so I posted my tour dates, literally didn't sell a single ticket, instead got 30 people writing, hey, I live in Kansas City. Can I be your opener? And I'm like, yeah. oh, I... I uh, yeah. Just ignore them. I was just in Kansas City. Yeah, you just say the club books. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been lying my ass off. Um, I say I do the whole set. I do beginning to end, two hours. So <laughs> I was. it was very cool, though, because it was in New York, and there were probably like 50 people there, and some people who listened to the podcast were there. And it was nice. It felt like we had some some Orthodox Jewish people there, uh, it was diverse, which I feel like is so important for like for the, the it kind sounds of fan like base you're grateful you want. for yourself. I would know it's grateful for people that that came out. It was very cool. It's exciting. It's <laughs> exciting to have people buy tickets to you. Listen to yourself. What the fuck? Yeah, you're pathetic. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. This is why we're I, here. You're like, you're like, I'm grateful <laughs> for the gym here. for allowing to get me <laughs> this huge drag. I, no, <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful that that people listen to this podcast. It's weird when people tell you they listen to the podcast. I'm so grateful for success. <laughs> this I'm is great. For my mom and dad. <laughs> it was not a lot of people. Yeah. What the fuck? This is the this is the positive part of the podcast. <laughs> so I just want to say uh, thank you, thank you, because I know some listeners came, and please, uh, it's going to be the first Sunday of every month. I, I'm sure we'll ask you. Uh, I'll ask you both soon. I don't know after this last little riff you did. Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll say, <laughs> you "Hey, to you the know, bottom of my full, list. <laughs> let me look to 2023. How's that march?" <laughs> 
But uh, thank you uh, for coming. It's called The Silver Lining for Sunday uh, of every month. Um, yeah. Ian, give us a, a, a blessing. I'm I'm great. Like I, I thought about this as I was walking here. Like I'm I'm walking here, and I like I had to go. Like no no kidding, I had to walk by like at least five homeless guys who were like one one in the fight with like I don't know who. There's like garbage all over the floor. There was a stray pit bull that ran past me. <laughs> it smelled terrible, and I was just like. John even, Marco's neighborhood sucks. Yeah. I was like, even through all this, man, I'm so grateful that I was born in New York City where like mm. I didn't have to move to like pursue what I wanted to pursue. I was able to just start here. Like even though this city could be so rough, I'm really grateful for that. Like this is like people who've like uprooted their comfortable lives to come to this garbage infested, you know, loose dog riddled homeless mental Thing. Yeah, see, that's a grateful thing. I'm happy that I can, I'm used to the trash that I'm surrounded yeah, in. Yeah, well, there is. That I'm the, comfortable I think with this. part of New York love is really like it's complicated because there's yeah. there's a lot of things about New York that are really upsetting and yeah, and All, tough. most things. Most. Yeah, I was on a train. The floor was wet. I'm like, it's not even raining. Why is the floor? Oh, wet? Yeah. Yeah. Been on the subway, <laughs> like the too. whole floor was wet. Well, you'll never. Oh my like, god, no, that's, that's the worst. Whether you're it's like, throw just up, somebody explain it. Throw yeah. up. Whether it's piss. As the train movie, there, there's that moment where the water, if it's here, it goes all the way to the end because yeah, of the traction, yeah. and then all the way to here when the train stops. Yeah. And you just watch the floor get covered in <laughs> right. whatever it right. was. Right. It, I'm like, it doesn't even look like pee. It's water. Like, where did this come from? Like, why is there water on the floor? I watched floor? a guy today throw a trash can down and then bark at the trash can. Yeah. I mean, he threw it on a huge trash can, knocked it over, and then went, row, 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 at the, <laughs> and I was like, I right. Love the city. I was like, what? Some the chaos I like. I love a broken MTA screen. Because I hate that they spend money on screens to show ads on the MTA. Yeah. So when I see a broken screen, I smile. I go, good for that guy. Yeah. This yeah. is not what we needed for the subway. This fucking this, this city, man. This And it's so funny. Like, you go on the road and you have these comics. Like, they look at it like they're like, yeah, move into the city. And I'm like, it's going to eat you alive. It, it does alive. eat people alive. And then they just move to Astoria. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about moving. Is that where yeah. you, is that where you guys are? No, no, no. We live in Ditmas. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, anything you want to plug? This is going to come out. Um, I'll tell you exactly. But but think about April, May. Uh Jordan, anything coming up? Um, I have. I think April. I'm in. It's coming out Helium. March 29th. Okay, April. Me and Ian fight answer headlining in Vermont. Ian was just on our last episode. He was. He was my other sub co-host. Nice Vermont Comedy Club. Going to be crazy. Going to be very fun. And Helium Philly at some point in April. I think. Oh, I guess you're just bragging, huh? Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm grateful for Jordan Jensen for getting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, got a podcast dropping soon. Ooh, what's it called? It's either going to be called Mom Pod or Mom Splain. My managers want it to be Mom Splain. I want it to be called Mom Pod, but it's me and my mom doing a podcast together. Nice. It's, very, it's pretty funny. Yeah. S sounds fun. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I started saying it, I was like, and I, I wish I could do a pod <laughs> with my mom. <laughs> you can have one of my moms. I have three. Okay. Just take them all. <laughs> so God damn um, it. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I'm doing was March 29th. I got a Roar comedy club in Springfield mash at the MGM. Fuck yeah. I'm doing that in April. I'm doing soul Joe's in April again. Um, and in uh, the dome. I think they're moving back to the dome. I hope they move back to the dome. You did indoors? Yeah, did you see it? It's not good? <sighs> it's rough. Is it? Yeah, it's like a... I mean, I love Soul, I love Joel. Yeah. Love the dome. But this indoor thing, it's like a country club, but it's like a, in a banquet room. Oh, yeah, I think I'm doing the dome. Jordan, it's do bleak. you know how plugs work? <laughs> <laughs> what? Because Sorry. I don't think you fully understand the concept. <laughs> We're trying... To get people to go to these shows, no, I'm and, with you. Okay. In the you banquet, know. don't go. No, no, yeah, don't go to the don't go to the. Country. No, I think or it's the dome. I think they're going back outside. The I dome's going gonna be sick. The, the dome, dome was great. great. I've done the dome many times. The yeah. dome, even you done bad the dome? weather. It's I fun. did the dome. It was it was hot and the lights were on me. The bugs started biting me. Like oh, you a did summer dome, fucker. The bugs. I did were, spring and, and the fall. The lights were on me, so it was like yeah. it was felt like I was getting attacked. I did spring and fall dome. Yeah, and it was a mix. It was a mix. I felt so bad because it was like a mix of like. 
a conservative, very conservative schools like PT, P, a parent yeah. teacher, and yeah. the other half was like a dog rescue shelter. Yeah, and it was just it was. There was a comic over. at the other day like going two. off about Roy Ashford. They were like, "Fuck that place! Fuck all those people! Come on, I'm not gonna be put." But yeah. I had a lot of fun. There. I, I had like fun it. every time I've done. It, it's been fun. Come to Soul Joe's and uh, and watch uh, my special uh, streaming on on YouTube. It's called Growing Shame Comedy Central. Growing Shame. Too. Um, me, I'm headlining uh, Dynasty Typewriter March 30th, uh, so that should be tomorrow. Um, and and come again. This is going to be the Downsides like official monthly show. It's called The Silver Lining, April 3rd, 8 p.m. at Sesh Comedy Club. Otherwise, I'm going to be uh, in Memphis soon. Uh, uh, Comedy Vault in Batavia. Wise Guys in Utah. And the Looney Bin in Oklahoma. I'm done I hope one. they have no windows in their cabana as well. Um, no, that one's good. No, was, the, 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 the condo's fine. Oh, the condo's fine. There's yeah. windows. Yeah, there's I, no listen, I'm... Only Kansas City has no... I mean, Kansas has no... That's so um, scary. Well, I'm still... I hope I get to go Very do that. Very illegal also. Yeah, no it's windows? in the club. It's in the oh. club? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's in the club. I like that. What? Yeah. Because you don't sick. have to... You're sick in the head about comedy. <laughs> I uh, there's you no are. doubt about that. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. You just said I like that about the fact that the club puts you into a windowless room and you get to be that close That's to That's how I get all my writing done. Oh god. So thank you for listening and uh for those of you uh those uh New York folks who came out to my show. Oh, uh, there we go. Just remember even if you love <laughs> even if you love New York City, <sighs> the water <sighs> is taking it away in a couple years uh, minimum. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside.